Hello there, it's Jay here with Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today I thought we'd have a look at the um, joystick 125 that I got with my um, Delta S computer. And as you can see here, um, I've actually fixed that colour issue I was showing the other day, I've got the red back, uh, so this is all working perfectly now. Um, it was a error with my um, little box there. Um, the, in the Skype connector the uh, wire for the red had um, come loose, come off, so I uh, soldered that back and everything's fine now because I've got the red back um, and all that's working, the computer seems to be working really well uh, I'm just actually going through, I've got a big box of um, uncased tapes here um, they came with a um, Spectrum uh, Plus 2A that I recently got um, and this just came in with the bundle so um, I've been going through them and um, seeing what will run on this um, Delta S and I've got a game um, working up here now what we've got on here um, I don't actually know what the game is to be honest it's so it's like a bit like a jetpack type game you're a spaceman um, you've got to fire things anyway it's irrelevant that um, I've got that game up and running just so I could um, test out this um, joystick, uh, this uh, joystick 125. So, um, as I said, it's very much like a copy of the um, Cheetah 125 and um, various clones that we used to uh, buy in cheap shops around here. Um, I don't know how well you can see the screen there. It's, yeah, um, it's a joystick. It actually surprised me it's not as bad as I thought it would be um, it's actually slightly better than the uh, sticks I used to buy as a kid uh, the £1.50, £1.25 joysticks um, it's quite responsive it's obviously it's not micro switched it'll be them I've not even opened it up yet that's what we're going to do um, in the next part of this video um, it's obviously uh, some kind of contacts like there's not micro switches in there but it, uh, it does the job, it does actually uh, work quite well it has two fire buttons, you've got a top fire button up there which works and you've got a, um, a trigger button there which works these two buttons down here as I suspected I think are dummy they're either gummed up or they're dummy, we'll find that out in a minute but yeah, um, so the joystick does actually work it works as a Kenston um, compatible joystick so uh, without further ado, I, I'll reset the computer, um, I will unplug the um, joystick while we're playing with it, there we go, we've got that out. As you can see now with the computer, um, we are getting a bit of flickering on it, uh, it's not perfect yet, I'm probably going to have to play around with a few uh, resistors and compa capacitors in the um, Skype connector there just to get the uh, signals exactly right, but it's a usable um, image. But anyway, let's get back to the, uh, let's tilt, um, let's tilt the camera down a bit. And uh, let's have a look at the joystick. Well, I'm going to say that I've got, I'm in my um, attic again. Um, I thought I'd get more light up here. I've got my um, strip lights on and I've got, I'm facing the window. The window's actually coming into where we're filming here. But even with all that, um, I noticed um, on the last recording I did, um, since I got this new camera, that the um, recording seemed to be much darker than I um, used to have. So I think I'm going to have to look at some um, auxiliary lighting now for when I um, start filming. Um, yeah, uh, that's something I'll have to look into. But anyway, I thought what we'd do is we'd have a look inside uh, this joystick and just see how... Um, how well built or how uh, not well built it is. I said for actual um, use, for actually trying it, um, it was quite a pleasant surprise. It actually does function um, fairly well with the few games I've played with it, um, which have mostly been little shoot 'em ups. Um, yeah, it, um, it does actually fare quite well. I might try it with a fighting game or something like that, perhaps a driving game as well, and um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it plays like with them. Um, I'll get Pac-Man on it as well I think Pac-Man will be a good test for it but without further ado let's um, let's get the screws out and uh, let's have a look inside it and see how this thing's made so as we seem to find with all um, Russian stuff they didn't seem to like Phillips screws they're all little um, cheese head uh, slotted um, screws you seem to find in all this Russian equipment if, same with um, the radios very rarely do you ever see um, 
that screws tight. Let's see if we can hopefully get this screw out. There we go. Yeah, that is coming out. Now, that was in very, very tight. Yeah, the same as in the Russian radio. You very, very rarely see um, Phillips head screws. You always seem to see these um, little cheese head um, slotted screws. And unfortunately, they're not as easy to work with. I mean, they do the job. They hold the equipment together. But uh, they're a bit of a pain to uh, assemble and get out because your screwdriver doesn't naturally hold in them like it does with the Phillips. But you know, they do the job. Right, okay, that's the four out from the bottom. So let's have a look uh, let's have a look inside it. Are you ready? Okay, um, I can't take it apart too much but um, Hopefully you can see this on camera. Uh, let me see if I can just get the camera a bit closer. I am going to just drag you in here. Let's, uh, that looks really, really dark, unfortunately. Let's see if we can uh, get a bit more light on that. But can we see um, how this actually works inside, how simple it is? What we've got is we've got a centre uh, brass contact here, which is obviously commoned up. This wire is really strange this is like really solid solid core wire they've used them inside the uh, flexible cable that comes from the lead obviously it's nice and bendy but um, these wires inside are uh, really thick solid core but we've got this um, center contact which then just bears down on four screws literally all we've got is the center contact which is held in place by four posts which have been melted over there and then underneath each of them springs is just another one of these just another little screw like that with a solder tag um, underneath it to solder the wire to and that's all that's making the contacts but to be honest I, <laughs> I kinda like that idea it's better than the um, little um, PCB that was in the cheap um, knockoffs I used to buy with the little um, dome over the top which was then held in place with a piece of um, like thick sellotape and with some vigorous um, waddling of your joystick the um, tape used to shift and the little dome used to shift out of place and this joystick could stop working uh, you don't have that problem with this this is actually it's actually quite heavy duty it's there's no way that them contacts really can break um, I mean it's Bra it's um, copper or uh, a copper alloy anyway it should be quite good for flexing and uh, I mean if it did stop um, start play it giving problems all you'd really have to do is get a um, get something to just clean a bit of isoprop really and just clean the bottom of there and these heads and you should be good to go again so yeah um, in there I'm actually quite in, quite impressed with that um, not the way we do it, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's certainly uh, certainly going to keep working. So uh, we'll reassemble the bottom part, and we'll have a look in the um, handle and see what they're using for the um, trigger switches. But as I was uh, I was right, these two buttons are um, dummies. They just sit down on posts, literally just sit down on some posts inside. So uh, hopefully we can get this back together now. We'll have to sit them in position down on their uh, this is going to be fun I think right let's see how we uh, reassemble this thing put the button the fake buttons back in and I think we're kind of like sandwich it together there we go I think we're ah that was a positive click I think if we hold it together now we can uh, put the screws back in. They must have literally just got hold of a, um, a cheetah joystick or one of their copies and literally just copied the moulding of it because the moulding really is the same. Uh, the plastic is 
cheaper than uh, the cheapest of the cheap um, plastics that uh, the Chinese ones were made out of are the uh, made in Taiwan, made in Korea, all them ones that you used to get. Um, the plastic on them was actually far far better quality than this. I don't know what it was with Russia. Um, some of their electronics isn't bad, it's made down to a price but it, oops, on the floor never to be found again. Oh, fortunately this time I found it. Um, like I said their electronics generally are made down to a price but aren't bad but the plastics that they used, I just, it really is very very low quality plastic. so much so you want to be careful when you're actually doing the screws up on it because it can just uh, shatter and shear but yeah there we go we've got the uh, the actual joystick back together but I think we will have a look inside the um, handle here and just find out what the um, two trigger switches there are that the top one doesn't feel particularly uh, responsive the trigger itself's not bad it's got even a slight click to it the bot that feels a bit mushy but they both do work well, like I said in, direction control on it, um, I can't fault it. Same again, we've got the uh, slotted uh, slotted screws in the side. Let's get them out. I'm tempted to go and uh, get that joy pad show you inside that now that does actually I am um, found it again it was down in my other workshop and uh, the other day I am um, opened it up and that has suffered some uh, water damage inside it's actually um, corroded inside um, quite badly I don't know whether I can do anything with that it doesn't use it used metal contacts in that one rather than the uh, brass alloy one in this and like I said it has corroded quite uh, badly. I will actually get that I think and uh, show you inside that one. Okay, um, well my switches have gone flying everywhere. Hopefully I can get this back together. Um, let's see, there we go. That's one of the plastic segments apart. Let's get the screws out. Oh wow, yeah. Now this is interesting. Now this is how the uh, trigger switch seems to work. Um, We've got one switch and it's actually activated by either of the um, plastic pieces. So it doesn't even use two switches, one for the uh, front trigger and one for the top trigger. Um, basically you've got two pieces of metal there and um, the front trigger pushes that one in to contact that one and the top trigger pushes that one in to contact that one. Hence why they've got the different feels to them because that one's got more um, play on it coming on that way than that one does. That's why you've got the mushy feel with it pressing in. That's interesting. That's really is cheap. It works and again um, there's nothing really to go wrong with it if it does stop working. I mean all you really got to do is get in here and uh, clean these contacts. So let's uh, reassemble that. Got the, that's the big challenge with this really it's um, yes you can take it apart you can look inside it but can you put the bloody thing back together when you're done let's have a look see if we can get this um, back together now which way around does that trigger for, yeah that looks about right does it go in that way that's it I think yeah I think we're right with that Take the other piece of plastic. Yeah, this is when you curse for your curiosity and uh, wish you'd never taken anything apart. I remember this so well as a kid. I just want to see how it worked. And it's in lots of bits, and I could never ever figure out how to put it back together again. And then end up in a cardboard box for months and months and months. And then usually end up getting recycled into another project or something. Nothing ever went to waste, it just never particularly got used for what it was um, originally bought for. Mostly toys that. There, I think we're nearly there. There we are. Okay, 
Does that feel? Does that feel right? Let's have a feel. No, no, I'm not happy with that. Let's have another uh, another go at this. Perhaps I had it the wrong way around. That's it. Yeah, I had the uh, trigger uh, on the other way around. So, let's put the screws back in. There we are. So that's back together. And in fact, I will just go and get the other um, the joy pad, and I'll show you the damage that's um, inside that. So just bear with me a tick, because it's just in my downstairs workshop. And I'm back, and here we are. Let's just move that out of the way. This is the um, joy pad that also came with the system, and I haven't actually got this working on a. I've not actually tried this on the um, on the Delta S yet because it actually definitely has um, something wrong with it. We'll open this up and I'll show you inside it. Now this one is you can also see there's some uh, corrosion on the screws before we even start so let's open it up and I'll show you the damage inside it I mean I'm not too bothered about this and you know, I'm hopefully I can repair it and you've got to remember how old this computer is it was meant to have been sold in 1992 not uh, 2016 and we don't know how these have been stored. The computers are obviously, obviously fine because they're in a sealed plastic bag but uh, these controllers aren't so it's obviously been damp at some point in its life but there we go as we can see if we have a look at the corrosion there and then um, unfortunately if we have a look inside this contact here it, says it works in a very similar way to the, um, to the big joystick here it's got a um, central contact there and it's got unlike the other ones which has got the nice screws in them these are just little riveted in pieces of metal but I mean that's not um, that's not the end of the world all these will clean up but this one here is really badly corroded as in um, part of it's actually rotted away there um, the contact underneath it uh, will clean up it's just dirty that will clean up with a bit of isoprop but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with um, that there where it's actually started to rot away what I think I'll end up doing is very care. I'll desolder that there, desolder that wire there very carefully lift that out clean all that up and then probably add some solder, tin it all up underneath so it's got a good contact area then reassemble it but yeah um, it's very very simple, it is just one button, both these buttons are linked together both fire buttons do work but um, they both do the same function uh, the wire it's made out of is interesting it's almost like I've seen this type of wire used in like aircraft instrumentation and uh, things like that it doesn't actually fill that um, cable it's actually loose inside the um, cable um, as you can see how it flattens it out there it's really really weird it's almost like lint wire that um, coils are wound with um, it's not what you'd expect to find in something like this but I think in Russia they literally just used what was about what was available 
but yeah. Uh, anyway, so um, I thought you'd find that interesting as well. Let's see if we can put this back together. And so that's going to need some more work on it. I would like that um, to work. It would be interesting um, to actually try it and to actually see how um, how usable it is. It might be quite good for um, like Manic Miner and games like that. I'm not sure. I'm very picky with um, certain games and what um, what controllers I like to use use for them. I know when I'm playing Manic Miner on the um, CPC, I um, much much prefer a gamepad to a joystick to play it. In fact, it's the only way I can progress in it. I'm, I love Manic Miner, I love um, Jet Set Willy and things like that, but I'm not terribly good at them. I seem to be better at them on certain on one system to another. Um, I'm terrible at it on um, the Spectrum, but I'm not too bad at it on the Amstrad CPC with a joypad. But anyway, uh, that's completely irrelevant. Yeah, that's um, the um, Soviet joypad, obviously uh, like Super Nintendo-esque clone. Um, but yeah, it's not bad that. And um, that, I'm actually, um, even though it's quite quirky um, construction, actually as a joystick to use, it's not horrendous. It, um, it's certainly playable with. It's uh, certainly on the par, if not slightly better, than the um, cheap Chinese ones that I used to play with as a kid. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. This was just a quick uh, video just to um, show you these joysticks uh, in a little bit more detail. So um, I'll uh, leave it at that. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.